This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. I'm glad we get so much detail on the books he reads. And uh oh, that's the last of my water mug. We might have to end uh, relatively soon then. <laughs> There's no way I could take a break to just refill my water. No way! All of a sudden, I've noticed that 1 p.m. has come and gone. Bit of a surprise, I would have expected Mitru to come drag me away by now. Deciding I might as well wait for her to show up, I reach out for another book. Oh no, they say. Why would you not just go meet her? But for some reason, I find myself unable to concentrate. The ticking of my clock seems strangely loud all of a sudden, because it's actually playing sound effects now. The ticking, uh, I can't maintain my usual focus on the printed word. Alright, suppose I might as well head over myself. Mumbling to no one in particular, I drop my book and head for Michiru's room. Michiru? You in there? It's about time, isn't it? I knock on the door and call out, but receive no response. There's always a possibility she had to leave on some pressing business, I suppose. If so, she could have at least said something to me, but... Well, that's her choice to make. The girl can do as she pleases. Oh, brother. Yeah. Hmm? You're... that same cat, aren't you? The black cat that's recently spent most of its time fused to meet you skull pushes the door open, poking its face outside. If this animal's here, it seems quite possible that Michiru's still in her room as well. But she didn't respond to my voice at all. Some sort of trouble, maybe. Michiru, I'm coming in. When I reach out for the doorknob, the black cat pulls back in a panic. Seems the little beast still strongly dislikes me. I enter the room slowly, keeping an eye out for booby traps out of an abundance of caution. Inside, I find Michiru lying face down on her bed, breathing in the soft and regular manner of a contented sleeper. I was prepared for the possibility of something being seriously wrong, so I have to admit this is a bit of an anti-climax. Sleeping in, are we? And after all that squawking this morning, you're a carefree one. Aw oh, man, do we wake her up or not? The cat hops onto the bed and leaks M Michiru's cheek repeatedly, but she doesn't even stir. Come to think of it, the girl tagged along for a full 15 kilometers of running yesterday. Hardly surprising she'd be exhausted. Yeah, that's insane. It wasn't a particularly impressive distance by my standards, but for a typical female student, I suppose it was a praiseworthy effort. Especially since she's probably not very in shape. Well, calling this woman typical strikes me as a somewhat problematic thing to say, but I'll save that debate for another day. Most people don't talk in their sleep. But apparently in fiction they always do. The cat and I look at each other and share the equivalent of a wry smile. Michiru's face appears to be resting on a fashion magazine. There's a picture of the outfit she wore yesterday circled in a permanent red marker. Even after all that exercise, I'm getting the feeling she was up late last night. In which case, it'd probably be more considerate to let her sleep instead of dragging her outside. I give the cat a single pet on the head, causing it to flee immediately, and turn to leave. Get some rest. We'll cancel today's date. What the <laughs> huh? <laughs> some phrases wake people up immediately. Just go back to sleep, alright? No reason to push yourself. Michiru forces out the words while glaring weakly at me through half-open eyes. Her claims rendered even less convincing when she rises to her feet and promptly staggers to the side, very nearly trampling her pet. Aww. Listen, just go back to bed. There's no reason to pointlessly exasperate your exhaustion. Exacerbate. I see. How much did you get last night? That's a little less than the recommended average for teenagers. Eight minutes? That's not even a nap, woman. Get back in that bed and sleep long enough to secrete your growth hormones properly. Aw. <laughs> it's kind of adorable how much she wants to date us, but... She... <laughs> Actually, I leave it up to you to decide. Does she deserve someone better than Yuji? Does Yuji deserve someone better than her? Or 
do they both deserve each other? <laughs> I can't decide. Everyone is so flawed in this game. Well, if you insist, let's get going then. Make your preparations in the next 30 seconds. Suppose not. You have five minutes then. I'll wait outside. Just how long will it take this girl to get a solid grasp on the Sundere concept anyway? In old movies, they often represented the time wasted waiting for women with a pile of cigarette butts on the ground. And that's kind of true. But in these days, there's a heightened social and legal pressure regarding both public smoking and littering, so that's become a pretty rare sight. What then can take the place of that image's visual shorthand for a man kept waiting by a woman? A red battery icon on the cell phone you've been using to browse the internet? Not really feeling the atmosphere from that one. In the first place, it's so easy to send messages these days that waiting in vain might well be less a f less frequent phenomenon than before. I'm still pondering these matters when Michiru appears, complete with cat hat. It's been exactly five minutes since I left her room. They deserve bacon, don't we all? <laughs> Actually, I don't think any of us as humans really deserve bacon. God was too good to us for that one. Oh, speaking of which, I have like... Four or five pieces of really good bacon that my parents gave me last week. I need to find a way, or I need to figure out what I want to make with that. Hmm. Didn't anyone ever tell you to arrive five minutes early to your appointments? <laughs> she got a point. Please define whatchamacallit. Ooh, a time... <laughs> a time traveler, you mean? Okay, let's get going already. I'll leave you behind. Oh, good. Let's hear it. Are we doing beach part two? Michiru delivers that line with all the triumphant flair of a strutting peacock. The beach? We just went a few weeks ago. That was like a year ago, actually, in terms of streaming time. She did not have a good time at the beach. According to Michiru, while I was off swimming with Amine and Makina, she'd been forcibly enlisted by Sachi to help construct an ultra-massive work of sand art. And in the end, the enormous castle they'd spent hours creating ended up collapsing just before they finished, trapping her beneath. <laughs> nice Star Wars reference! Okay, I, I believe you. I see. I have to say, though, it's a bit of a boring choice from my perspective. What? The beach is a great date choice. Pretend date, I believe. How long? It, this, is he actually this stupid to think it really is a pretend date? Or, like, is he just messing with her? That said, I suppose you have a point. Just the two of us makes playing on the beach means it might not be that bad. No, but we're pretending, so I said it anyway. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it was rude. And so we set off walking for the nearest public beach. Not rushing along, not fleeing anxiously, a simple leisurely stroll. Not unpleasant in its own right. Um, didn't we have to drive there? That's gonna be a long walk. What's up? Hands? I see. We are on a pseudo-date, so that seems appropriate. When I reach out, Michiru momentarily jerks her hand away, but soon tentatively surrenders to my grasp. She's got a decidedly small hand, with, with rather thin fingers. On closer examination, they seem to be small white flecks in her nails. Are you eating properly? Your fingernails don't seem to be getting adequate nu nutrients. 
<laughs> she knows that there's more to life than beans. I'm not sure a diet consisting of cheap sweets and takeout lunches can really be described as healthy, my friend. True enough. This is a date, after all. Right then, I will now offer a more date-appropriate comment. You're wearing perfume, aren't you? I smelled freesia and pink pepper at first, but now I'm getting heliotrope and iris? With a hint of sandalwood and synthetic musk underneath. That's kind of creepy that you can smell and just immediately know. To some degree. Mostly intuition, though. Anyway, there's no need to wear perfume. You smell nice naturally. Oh, that that's a nice thing to say. I take a lock of Mitra's hair in my free hand and gently stroke it. After a moment, I allow the strand of blonde hair to fall from my fingertips. It whispers against my skin as it goes, That was a little weird. The cat watches me touch Michiru from its vantage point nearby, a supremely irritated look on its furry face. Why the cat so mad? <laughs> I mean, it is a cat, so still. No, not really. Doggone it, Yuji! You actually said something really nice there, and then you had to ruin it. Oh, thanks, OBS. Okay, we're back online. I, I need a, a better computer for streaming. I, I use my laptop, and w whenever it overheats, it, like as a safety measure, it shuts down the internet. So, that's annoying, but we're back now. I'll probably have to end the stream pretty soon, because generally once... Once my laptop overheats to begin with, it will generally keep overheating. But I at least want to get to the end of this sequence of scenes. It's a lie. Like I said, I'm just pretending here. How many times do I have to say this? Why do you keep taking it seriously? Yeah. That's why the cat's mad. I understood the first time. No need to repeat yourself. Hmm. それでもどうしてだろうってずっと考えてて。わかんないからもういいや。気にしないやって思ったんだけど。でもね。考えようとしてないに。幼児のことが頭から離れなくなったの。I think you're young, naive, and in love. Hmm, maybe it's because you're not used to it? I doubt it matters that I'm the one that did it. Anybody would feel a little awkward over a sudden kiss, and without much experience, I can see how it would weigh on your mind. That's right. Didn't mean a thing to me. It was just a moment of physical contact. What a charmer. <laughs> oh yeah, I've kissed tons of girls. Oh. Yeah, that's the gist of it. No feelings attached. <sighs> this is... Can't tell if the writing in this game is brilliant or terrible. Right now it's kind of terrible. I was lying too, actually. Hold on, are you seriously planning to do this for every little thing I say? This is a pretend date, so don't take anything coming out of my mouth seriously. This is just... This is getting... This is getting annoying. Mitra scratches vigorously at her head in confusion and dismay. The cat, surprised by her sudden violent motion, leaps nimbly away. Uh, is the cat gonna be okay going away? 
Uh, Mitru strongly squeezes my hand as she speaks. The slightly sad look on her face belies her positive words. Seems my teasing has gone a little too far. Perhaps a conciliatory gesture is in order. Mitru, my friend, as this is a date, I happen to have a present for you. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. If he does something jerky, I'm go I'm going to be upset. After a quick scan of the area, I pick up a rock of moderate size lying in the dirt nearby. I then return and po gently place this in Mitru's open hand. He doing something jerky, folks! <laughs> he doing that... <laughs> wow. Even, like, just kissing her right there would have been a better choice than that. <laughs> I got a rock. Alright, you can open your eyes now. Mitra slowly opens her eyes. In her palm rests a majestic lump of stone. You gon' die, Yuji. You've wanted that one for a while now, right? I picked it up for you. He gonna die. Right. It's a pretend date, so I you get a rock I picked up off the ground. Now rejoice! <laughs> this is... I don't know whether to laugh or cry at this. I see! Move to tears of joy, eh? Ha ha ha! Afterward, with comments such as, This is the hot color for fall, or They collaborated with another designer on this one, I proceed to present Michiru with rock after rock. And every time Michiru answers, No way, I'm so happy, or Yay, what a nice surprise, and accepts my gifts with a great show of gladness. I see, I see. Perhaps this dating fiend is somewhat enjoyable after all. I offer rocks and receive joy in return. A strikingly surreal spectacle, if I do say so myself. This is sounding like one of those glitches in a Harvest Moon game, where if you give Potpourri, like, a rock or a weed, she actually genuinely likes it. I doubt I'll soon forget the sight of Mitra's shark pouch bulging at the seams from its cargo of stone. How are we going to explain this to the others when they get back? Like, hey, so what did you and Mitru do? Oh, we went on a pretend date. Really? Yeah, I gave her a bunch of rocks, and she cried tears of happiness. It's like, ugh. At that point, we, we go into the insane asylum. Just throw them away when we're done. They're only rocks. <laughs> Hi, Proxima! Welcome! We are in the middle of a very um weird situation right now, but... <laughs> Oh, yay, we're at the beach. Woo! Oh, and she's in her nice swimsuit as well. And she's not throwing up. Never mind, maybe she is. Having stowed her bag and changed into her swimsuit, Michiru joins me at the beach. Seems like the girl re rented a large air mattress while she was at it. She's dragging it behind her, apparently struggling with the weight. It's a good distance from here to the beach house. Must have been a relatively difficult carrying that float of that size all the way here. Again with that swimsuit, huh? It's a nice swimsuit. What's wrong with it? The, the, the developers didn't want to put in the time and effort to draw a second bathing suit for Michiru. This area isn't exactly flourishing, I guess. And when everyone thinks the beach must be packed today, sometimes barely anyone actually shows up. Not uncommon, actually. <laughs> I, I like swimming in my school uniform. <laughs> I'm boring that way. The swimsuit clad, bottle blonde, peers at me with an innocent confusion on her face. She honestly seems to have only just noticed. Strange woman. Listen, you didn't tell me we were going to the beach until after we left the dorm. When exactly was I supposed to procure myself a swimsuit? Hmm. Nope! That's not happening. Period. 
Not happening. Just as Mitra says, even by the standards of this mostly empty beach we found ourselves, a particularly isolated spot. If nobody's going to notice anyway, going in naked might be a suitably carefree approach. No! Stop! What you're doing! No! Stop! What you're doing! <laughs> I am playing the censored version, but just in case, I can do that at a moment's notice. Oh boy. Meet you, my friend. I'm now naked. Why? Hmm? Something wrong? Why are you looking away? Um, gee, I just, I can't think of even a single reason why she might not be comfortable with this. Hmm? Something strange about my body? It's more what it's lacking right now. Why are there all these fanfares happening? I see. Well, if you notice anything odd, just feel free to let me know. I noticed something odd! <laughs> oh, she hears it too! Fanfare? What's wrong? Th that would still be weird, but way less so. Hmm? Is that so? Oh, very well then. Don't understand what you're getting all red in the face about, though. Weird girl. No! No, I think that you're the weird one! Yeah, I rarely agree completely with Michiru, but, you know, she, she, I agree. Her face is still flushed. Michiru runs energetically toward the shining summer sea. I trot along behind her in a sheet of warm spray. She looks back over her shoulder. That's a cute little, uh, that's a cute little image right there. And delivers an appropriate playdate line. Oh! I break into an all-out dash and catch Michiru in less than a second, with a flying tackle. <laughs> now is not the time to recreate that scene from The Lion King, buddy. <laughs> that was a great impression. My apologies. When told to catch someone, I feel it would be impolite to not make my best efforts to do so. <laughs> Mitra's astute question returns to me to my senses. Indeed, who exactly would I let down by allowing the girl to escape? I'm constantly obeying instructions handed down to me. My own will has no relevance. I simply carry out the task assigned to me. You're kind of like Sachi in that regard. But today, I'm under no such obligation, and I still wag my tail on request. How pathetic. Seems I've been domesticated right down to my bones. You have a point. Hardly any reason to stay tense at a time like this. <laughs> Yuji really needs to leave the wildebeest herd at home. Oh, sorry. Pure, pure reflex. That's not really the issue, but, uh, whatever. After that, we enter the sea and spend some time splashing around in the water. With no particular objective in mind, we mess around in the waves and swim idly under the sun's warm gaze. I'm glad that Mitru actually gets another beach scene and gets to have fun here. I think you could describe it as an afternoon well spent. Mitru has a cheerful smile on her face the whole time. Aw, that's nice. <laughs> oh, don't you know? Yuji's the invincible anime protagonist. He, he's good at everything. This is more like waiting, really. I have to say, you seem pretty tired yourself. So you're insufficiently rested after all. Maybe a brief nap's in order. Oh, there's a thought. Michiru carefully lies herself face down on the plastic sea mattress. Anxious, apparently anxious about her bathing suit riding up, she sticks a finger and tucks down on the cloth numerous times. Hmm. 
Don't you sleep on your back? <laughs> I know I go to sleep with a bulletproof blanket as well. Who is this enemy supposed to be? I sort of get what you're saying, but the logic's a little incoherent. You, you, you didn't put on the sunscreen first? That's the first thing you do before you even get to the beach. And don't forget to get the tops of your feet, otherwise you get them sunburned when you're wearing sandals, like I did last time I went to the beach. It was not fun. Alright, I'll put it on for you. We are pretend dating after all. I'll get the spots you can't read. Well, I guess if she's wearing a one-piece, she probably doesn't have to get her back. But the back of your neck... Of course, you can't cover your entire body by yourself now, can you? I'll lend a hand. Isn't making people do this sort of thing for you the Sundere way? You named the shark pouch. Samaki... Oh. The pouch. I retrieved the bottle of sunblock from Michiru's shark pouch. When I take off the cap and tilt it toward my hand, a thick white liquid emerges in globs. Yeah, you gotta get SPF, like, 10,000. I have this fought every time, but the stuff just looks just like a... No? Why? If you actually think that, there's something wrong with your head, okay? Understood. Here goes. As promised, I begin to spread the lotion along the exposed portions of Michiru's body. Perhaps she finds summer sun hot, as her skin's already growing sticky with sweat. Good question. Actually, bad question. I don't want the answer. Not quite. When you're somewhere that gets really intense sunlight, this stuff is a necessity. In Japan, it's usually nothing worth worrying about, but depending on the country, you can end up with debilitating or even fatal sunburns. If you're in Florida in the summer, you be you better be slavering that on all the time. What's wrong? That tickle? What? Hmm. Some people will probably tell you the stuff's helping to kill the world's coral reefs, but the cosmetics companies would probably say, Typical use won't cause any adverse impacts. There are various opinions depending on how you look at it. It's not a question that can be answered simply and decisively either way. Not true. The world's overflowing of things I don't know. For example, if you ordered me to hum a tune from the current number one musician on the Japanese charts, I'd probably need some time. I furrowly and gently spread the sunblock across the back of Mitra's body. When I'm satisfied with my handiwork, I give her a light smack on the rear and speak. Wow, rude. All right, other side, flip over. Why so reluctant, woman? Do you want to turn into a reversey stone? Having your front and back completely different colors would probably seem slightly unnatural. Yeah, but she can get the front herself. Quit whining and flip over. Here we go. Oh, I... I don't like the way that this CG is going at all. That's a cool raft, though. Don't squirm too much. You'll fall off. Trembling like a newborn fawn, Michiru reluctantly settles her body face up on the mattress. The girl tries her best to put up a tough front after the fact, but it's comically unconvincing. Her delivery is so strained and artificial, you'd think she was reading the words off of a script. Wait, are we done squawking now? I'm ready to put the stuff on you if that's alright. Michiru finally grows docile, apparently resigned to her fate. Taking the bottle of sunblock in hand, I squirt out another glob and begin applying it to her lower body. The girl darts her eyes back and forth restlessly, looking at anything but me. Because it's closer to me. No other reason. What's wrong? Feeling anything? I wasn't implying anything strange, just wondering if you're feeling the sunblock starting to work. 
へそんなのわかんないよぬるぬるしてるだけだし She still has that bracelet on her arm, which is interesting. I lather the white liquid across her thighs, the back of her knees, and her ankles, thoroughly coating every inch of exposed skin. I can feel Michiru's light leg hair sticking flat against her skin as I rub the lotion in. Apparently, this bothers the girl somewhat, judging by the anxious little glances she's now sending in my direction. What's wrong? Self conscious about the hair? <laughs> I think we already talked about this. Anyway, when you shave, you're cropping off the light, thin part of the hair, leaving behind the fat roots and the, at the surface of your skin. That's what makes it look thicker for a while. It's not like you're really getting any hairier. Up to you. Don't ask me, woman. Do what you want. A little fuzz on your legs is hardly anything worth worrying about either way. Alright, time for the upper body. I would let her get that. I resume my systematic lotion smearing campaign, tracing my hands from Michiru's shoulders down to her upper arms. Through the elbow all the way to her fingertips, with every stroke she wiggles her body and lets out little sighs. Why are we getting a scene of just this? This is stupid. What's wrong? Feeling anything? <laughs> I'm not reading that. <laughs> Shouting in protest, Mitri lifts her upper body from the float, and in that instant a wave comes rolling in alongside her. <laughs> Tumbling from her plastic perch, she falls headfirst into the sea. Ooh, that's going to be a cold dip. Well, that works too. They say being in the water reduces your exposure to UV radiation. You still need sunblock, though. You can get sunburned through the water. <laughs> For some reason, this news doesn't seem to cheer Michiru up much. Her twin tails float limply on the surface of the sea, like two pitiful strands of oddly colored seaweed. By the time Michiru manages to drag herself back to the beach, her skin's taken on a warm, lit red glow. Guess I really should have finished the job after all, huh? You didn't get her face! That's one of the mo- You didn't get her face or her neck, which are like- the most important places to sunblock, basically. Trust me, if you get sunburned on the back of your neck, good luck sleeping. Well then, what shall we do with ourselves? There's still plenty of daylight left. Want to try a triathlon next? I see. Alright then, I'll walk you back to the dorm. Remember to put the rest of your clothes back on, though. Yeah. This is a date, after all, of sorts. Ah, so ka. So da yo ni. Also, we didn't rent the shark float from the old man. I knew you'd be back, young man, for the shark floats. I don't want them. Oh, I already rented them to you. <laughs> Michiru delivers this answer with a strangely forlorn expression on her face. Why is that? Aren't we pretending? Well, later works for me, but from the way things look, it's going to be another titanic struggle for her to get that float back to the beach house. Is her refusal to even try asking me for her help another aspect of the Sundari Act? Or perhaps the girl's just helplessly awkward. Okay, I think that's where we're going to end things. Yep, we just finished that. <laughs> Yes, I am saving Mishiru. Alright, well, that was less painful than some of the Sachi root parts. Still got a little awkward. I don't know why we needed a really long scene of us applying sunblock to her in a vaguely sensual way. That was n unnecessary. But, at the same... And we also didn't get a whole lot in terms of the plot, but we got some cute moments. <laughs> Sonic, thanks for the host. Unfortunately, that came... <laughs> right at the end of the stream. Thanks for joining in, Nick. Thanks for joining in, Sonic, Proxima, anybody else in chat. I appreciate it. We'll be continuing this probably next week. Hopefully we can get more um, details on the plot. I have no clue how long the, the Michiru route is going to be, but we, we, we had some nice moments today. That was fun. And, of course, we continue polar opposite of this game, Backyard Baseball, on Mondays and Wednesdays. So 
that's always fun. Tune in for those as well. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and God bless.